Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the voice of reason. I welcome you this uh, this midday Sunday. Uh, got got a bit of a late start uh, today, but uh, better late than never as we continue our ongoing coverage of the uh, Atrian invasion of the Tigray region and the civil war in the former state of Ethiopia. Well, let's start down in the uh, southern part of the conflict, uh, the fighting that is continuing uh, south of Alamata, west of Korim. Uh, it would appear that Tigrayan defense force lines remain relatively stable west of Korim, again, very uh, rugged, mountainous hill country, west of Korim, with multiple lines of Tigrayan defense forces defending against the ongoing push by uh, Amharan regional militias and to a, uh, an extent as well, be loyalist forces uh, from the uh, ENDF, the Ethiopian National Defense Forces. Uh, to the south, we continue to see uh, both Amharan regional militias and uh, ENDF forces, a B loyalist forces, attempting to push past uh, the border town of Waja. Uh, Alamata at this point is, is uh, still being defended. There are still multiple Tigrayan defense force lines uh, continuing to protect uh, the routes into Alamata, and Alamata continues to, to be under the control of the uh, Tigrayan defense forces, specifically to the north and northwest. A very uh, rugged terrain that has been fortified uh, by the uh, the Tigrayan defense forces. So we don't anticipate that we will see a direct assault on Alamata and the fall of Alamata by a B loyalist forces at uh, at this point. We continue to watch uh, fighting in the north. Uh, the, some of the most heaviest fighting is taking place within the vicinity outside of Shire towards the Didaro and uh, west of these locales. Again, uh, Shire is still under the control of the uh, Tigrayan Defense Forces. And uh, at this point, we are starting to see, and we have been seeing, in locales such as the Didaro, uh, in, within the vicinity of uh, Rama, uh, and then the uh, northeast near uh, Zalambasa, we have, see, we have seen the Tigrayan Defense Forces digging into these cities and uh, using the cities as defensive redoubts against uh, Eatrian forces and to be loyalist forces. So why this time are we starting to see and have been seeing Tigrayan forces dig in and use the cities as uh, fortified areas? Well, they didn't do that the, uh, the first time, the first invasion that took place in late 2020, and that resulted in a fairly rapid advance by both the Eatrian military and the Abi Loyalist forces occupying most of the major cities in the Tigray region. And as we know, because of some very tenacious uh, uh, mobilization efforts and uh, counterattacks by the uh, mo fully mobilized Tigrayan defense forces, we saw those forces uh, evicted from the Tigray region. But unfortunately, while the Eatrian army occupied areas in the north of Tigray, and we saw the Fano militias, the, uh, the Ethiopian National Defense Forces, the Abi Loyalist Forces occupy Mekele and other areas, we, uh, we saw the rape of Tigray take place. And uh, everything, including stuff that was nailed down, bolted down, was uh, was basically stolen from the Tigray region. We saw massive theft. We saw massive crimes against the humanity uh, by the uh, Eatrian uh, army against the uh, citizens, the people of the Tigray region. We saw arbitrary rapes. We saw death squads. We just saw some horrendous activity by the Eatrian army in its occupation of northern Tigray under this auspice of a quote-unquote law enforcement op operation and obviously now the international community fully understands that it was not a law enforcement operation but it was the rape of Tigray and we saw that take place and uh, after those forces were eventually evicted 
I, I believe at this point uh, the uh, Tigray region, with this social contract being broken by the Abi loyalist forces, by the Eritrean army, they are going. They have no other. Uh, they have no other option but to defend in the, these cities. If these cities were to fall again by the Eritrean army, if the Eritrean army rolls in to Shire, takes control, control of Shire as it did in late 2020 then we can expect the same thing. And that is why the Tigrayan Defense Forces simply does not have an option to leave the cities. If they leave the cities without fighting for the cities, and the Eritrean army, the Abi Loyalist armies, roll into these cities, these cities will be raped and destroyed again. And uh, they, uh, they see it as a lesser of two evils. Uh, d defending the cities, yes, the cities are going to be shelled. Uh, probably, uh, in some cases, areas are going to be destroyed. But in any case, that is going to happen anyway if the Eritrean army rolls in and seizes control of these cities, just like they did back in late 2020. So at this point... It is do or die for the Tigray region. They have no choice but to fight. It is a fight for survival. And in a case uh, of a fight for survival, you will see these cities being used as defensive positions and defensive redoubts as the uh, Tigray region continues maximum mobilization efforts against these uh, this this very aggressive invasion by the Eritrean army and the Abi loyalist forces at this point. But uh, again, uh, as we had talked about in previous videos, the uh, operation, the invasion by the Eritrean army along three uh, base invasion routes uh, in the east, along the B-20 near Zalambasa, in the central near Rama, this area here, and then in the west uh, in the direction towards both. Uh, uh, Shire and uh, Shiraro. Uh, they have taken, it sounds like, Shiraro, but they're having a very, very difficult time in they, the Eritrean army, in terms of uh, progressing uh, and seizing control of uh, Shire. Some people believe that Shire is, is the gateway, is the key to the eventual takeover of northern Tigray by the Eritrean army. I would say... Uh, while it would uh, be a significant setback uh, for the uh, the uh, Tigrayan defense forces in terms of losing Shire, the uh, the eventual advance along the B30 highway west towards other major towns and cities would still be very very difficult, as it's still very much a uh, a mountainous area. I'll switch over to the uh, terrain feature where you can see that. And again, and quite honestly, as we uh, as we watch this conflict take place, the uh, the concept that uh, Shire would fall quickly was still unknown at this point. We still weren't sure if the Tigrayan defense forces were going to use these cities as a defensive redoubt. But again, even if Shire does fall, it is still a very very difficult proposition to continue to move along the B30 highway. And especially uh, given that a lot of this area uh, north of the B-30, south of the B-30, uh, is going to be relative safe harbor for the Tigrayan Defense Forces. All these towns and villages north and south of the B-30 highway are, uh, are very obviously sympathetic to the Tigrayan Defense Forces and not sympathetic to the Eritrean Army. And uh, again, uh, it's just very, very difficult terrain. And compounding that, uh, uh, Shire, uh, this city is being fortified. And uh, in all probability, you would see vicious house-to-house, street-to-street fighting, uh, even if the uh, Eritrean army were in a B loyalist forces were to break the defensive lines uh, outside of uh, Shire. And again, Shire has not fallen. We are continuing to see fighting taking place well outside of Shire. Shire is being hit, being shelled uh, by long range rocket forces of the Eritrean army. But actual ground assaults with infantry uh, taking place uh, within the vicinity of Shire is, uh, is not yet occurring. But uh, that's kind of where we sit right now. We're watching Shire very closely. We're also watching what is happening just south of, uh, of Alamata. Again, we expect that Alamata, again, a decent-sized town, uh, would be uh, very well defended. 
uh, with uh, multiple defensive lines by the Tigrayan Defense Forces and internal uh, defensive lines within the city itself. And obviously the, uh, the, uh, the mountainous terrain to the west of Alamata is still well under the control of the uh, Tigrayan Defense Forces. So we anticipate these to be very, very intense battles. I would also not rule out some sort of counter operation south of Waja, uh, close to Kobo, east in the Zobel mountain range, or west of Kobo. As we do know, the uh, Tigrayan Defense Forces are still very much active in this area and again to the east in the Zobel mountain range. So that is kind of where we set uh, for today. Again, we are watching things very closely near Shire. Very heavy fighting continues, and obviously as we get more information, we will absolutely report it. Again, thank you for joining us today, and as always, uh, have a good Sunday, and we'll see everybody soon. Thanks for joining us.